Oh, geez. Here comes another Cinderella story. That's right, the second movie with Selena Gomez and Drew Seeley. Big days, entertainment rankings and reviews. So, greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Dole, better known to you as the Big D. This time around, I bring to you a review of the 2008 teen musical comedy flick, Another Cinderella Story, released by Warner Premier, as it was a direct-to-DVD title, the second installment of A Cinderella Story. If you've not seen my review for the first movie, I advise you to click on that card coming up right about now. There we go. Give you a few seconds. Okay. Now then. Like its predecessor, it's a retelling of the Cinderella fairy tale in a modern setting. The film was directed by Damon Santo Stefano, written by Eric Patterson and Jessica Scott, starring Selena Gomez along with Drew Seeley and Jane Lynch. If you've not seen this movie, I'm just going to give you the story anyway, because this has been out for almost 13 years, so I'm sure a lot of you have seen it, okay? Now, the story focuses on Mary Santiago, a high school senior aspiring to become a dancer. She was adopted by washed-up pop star Dominique Blatt because Mary's deceased mother was one of Dominique's dancers. At home, Dominique and her snobby daughters, Britt and Bree, treat Mary as a slave. While at school, Mary and her best friend, Timmy, are bullied by the step-siblings and the school's queen bee, Natalia. Joy Parker, a famous celebrity and pop star, has returned to school for his senior year. And to remember why he started dancing, accompanied by his best friend, Dustin, a.k.a. The Funk. He is also hosting a dance contest where the winner will be his partner in his next music video. Natalia is Joy's ex-girlfriend and determined to get back together with him. Joy hosts a dance class... Then Natalia, Britt, and Bri attend. Mary sneaks behind the one-way mirror and is the only one able to match his moves. But her cell phone rings and she flees. Later, Dominique, hoping to revitalize her career, asks Joy to perform a duet with her while Britt and Bri hit on him, but he refuses and brings up a time Dominique insulted him on TRL. Yes, you heard me correctly, as in the TRL, the MTV show. <laughs> the school holds a masked ball, but Dominique goes partying and orders Mary to clean her incredibly filthy room by the time she returns at midnight. Fortunately, Tammy contacts her sister's boyfriend's family, who owns a cleaning service. And agrees to clean the room. Then Tammy provides them with dresses and they attend the ball. Tammy and Dustin dance while Mary and Joy dance with Naya recognizing each other. Mary and Joy stun everyone with their skill, but Brynn and Bree spill a bowl of M&Ms and Mary slips while Joy helps her up and pulls off his mask, shocking her. Then asks who she is, but she notices a clock ring 15 minutes to midnight and you guess it, she runs home, arriving just before Dominique does. She left her Zoom behind, which Joyce picks up, which is like an iPod. That I kind of didn't, was one of the things I don't didn't feel comfortable with. I mean, I was fine with an iPhone, well, a, a cell phone, certainly. But this, um, I think they could have done better, you know. Uh... Or way I might have mispronounced it. I think it was pronounced Zoom, not Zoom. So if it's O, then my mistake. The next day, Joy announces to the school that he must find the mystery girl from the ball and presents the Zoom, saying whoever can announce the top four played songs on it is the one. A bunch of girls and even a few boys get in line and try to do it, obviously failing. 
Grin and Bree deduced Mary is the mystery girl and threatened to release an embarrassing video she made when she was 11 if she tries to tell Joy. Tammy convinces her not to care about that as she tries to tell him, but he thinks she was sent by Dominique about the duet and blows her off. At Brynn and Bree's big day, that's birthday, and to me of course, party, Dustin recognizes Tammy as dance partner and flirts with her after provoking, uh, pro not pro proving his identity, not pro sorry, I'm Mary tries to tell Joy again, but Brit and Bree play the video, make everyone laugh at her. She runs off in tears, but Joy catches up to her and says it is okay, and he's realized she, she was the mystery girl, asking her on a date. Later, Mary receives a letter saying she has been accepted by the Manhattan Academy of Performing Arts, but when the Academy calls to confirm it, Dominique answers and claims Mary has broken two legs. Attempting to stop the date, the step-siblings give Mary a ridiculous number of chores, but this backfires when Joy helps her and them, uh, and, well, with them, and makes them fun by dancing through them. She helps him write his next song, and he invites her to his house, but when she arrives, she sees through the window Natalia on top of Joy in bed and runs off in tears. Dominique insincerely comforts her and claims the Academy called to reject her. Now for the ending. I'm going ahead with it. Five seconds to stop. You know that what that means. Go to the description box below. Fast forward to the time below. If you have seen this movie, then continue on after the five seconds. Thank you, and here we go. Okay, you've been warned. Joy and Dustin are confused when Mary and Tammy give them the cold shoulder and confront Tammy, who berates Joy for cheating on Mary. They clarify Natalia broke into his house trying to seduce him, but he drove her away. Tammy agrees to help them. The dance contest is up, and Tammy and Dustin convince a still angry Mary to attend. A Manhattan Academy representative is there at Joy's invitation. After Brid, Bree, and Natalia put on lackluster performances, Joy calls Mary to the stage and convinces her to dance with him and perform the song they wrote together. Then clarifies that he did not cheat on her. Mary wins the contest, and Natalia admits Mary is better than her. The representative scolds Dominique for lying and says Mary was accepted by the Academy. Dominique tries to leave, but trips and falls off the stage, ironically breaking both of her legs. Yeah. And Mary and Joy kiss. As Mary, Joy, Tammy, and Dustin load her belongings in a van, a wheelchair bound, Dominique begs her not to go, but Mary and Joy share in their kiss and drive away. End of story. So, what did I think of another Cinderella story? Well, I'd say it's factually an okay movie. I didn't quite enjoy this as much as its predecessor. Now, ever since the day it came out, I ignored this movie. I didn't think I would enjoy it, because even though I did like, do like Selena Gomez a bit, since I watched Wizards of Waverly Place, which she was big on at the time, but after that, I didn't watch the show much anymore. I lost interest in it, but one day I may give the show a second chance, if I watch it on Disney+. Plus. But anyway, um... Well, I still say she was good, though, in this as Mary. Now, now, and only Jane Lynch did a reasonably good job as, as Dominique. She was definitely a pretty good one. I mean, she ranks up there with Jim Fertilli from uh, the fourth movie, which I'll be coming up next, well, coming up soon. And Jennifer Coolidge from the first movie as... Three of the best stepmothers from the uh, from the Cinderella story franchise, but that could change though. Anyway, there's Catherine Isabel as Bree and Emily Perkins as Brit. Yeah, and let's see, Jessica Parker Kennedy plays Tammy. Marcus T. Polk plays Dustin. Nicole Laplaca plays Natalia, and 
playing Joy is Canadian American actor singer Drew Seeley, which that kind of draws me into a big to the big negative of this movie. And I know a lot of critics do a, and I'm agreeing with the critics on this. I don't know what in the the calm blooming world they were thinking. Now I'm going to a bit of a a bit of a rant, but it'll be in a family friendly way. I don't know why in the con blooming world they were thinking of putting Prince Seal, Mr. Seely in. Because he's like 11 years older than, than Selena Gomez was, apparently. Because at the time, Selena Gomez was only 15, while Seely was 26. Yes, what in the hairy heck were these people thinking? Not very understanding, are they? Mm mm. I wasn't too thrilled with the choices, though, but, however, I did like some of the choreography that was used, however, and and the young Miss Gomez provided something I don't know, the well, song from the soundtrack. So, anyway, this film's just kind of, um, a 50-50, uh, well, okay, not 50-50, but, um, kind of a miss, though. This is just a... A slight disappointment, what have you. It's just not really the best of the Cinderella Story franchise, from my point of view. But anyway, the directing was fine, but it was the choreography, Selena Gomez's performance. Well, I did like Drew Seeley's performance, but I figured they would have went with a much more person around Miss Gomez's young Miss Gomez's age. Okay, enough said. Jane Lynch was good. Everyone else was kind of well here or miss. Probably unforgettable though. So would I recommend another Cinderella story? Well, not exactly. If you are, but if you're a diehard Selena Gomez fan, or if you're in. Or if you into, or if you got a soft spot for Drew Seeley, who uh, I found he before this he did um Troy's singing voice in High School Musical, as a matter of fact. But I'd say I'd rather you didn't go with this one. St probably words to the wise, stick with the original or t maybe the later movies. Well, except maybe for the third one, uh, they'll get better later on after the third one. So, again, enough said. So, if you so, what are your thoughts on another Cinderella story? Do you like it or do you hate it? You be the judge, okay? Tell me in the comments section below if you like this video. Click the like button below. Subscribe to my channel and be a part of the Big D Nation. Join me next time when I continue with a Cinderella story, Once Upon a Song. Thanks for watching, and if you like this, you may want to check out some of these other reviews. In the upper left-hand corner is my review of The Princess Diaries, which turned 20 this past year. The upper right-hand corner is its sequel, The Princess Diaries 2, Royal Engagement. Or if you just want something else with a more princessy feel, go to the bottom left-hand corner and see my review of the first installment of Disney's Descendants. And the bottom right-hand corner is the button you can click to subscribe. If you like rankings and reviews on movies, TV, music, video games, etc., then I'm your guy. Thanks for watching. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying, see ya.